Hey guys, welcome back to Heart Breathings. I'm excited to bring you the second video in the how to edit your novel series. Today we are going to talk about the different types of professional freelance editors that are out there, how much they cost, where to find them, and that sort of thing. So hopefully you will stay tuned. Okay, so as we get started, we're gonna discuss today the different types of editors and what each edit entails and how much they cost. Those are kind of the big topics here today. So if you are traditionally publishing your novel, you may still want to use some of these types of editors before you send it out to agents on submission so that you can have the best possible version of your manuscript, or you might not, because when you get an agent, they're gonna help you through some of these things. They're gonna help you polish up your story and make it great. They're probably not gonna line edit your novel, but they might help you with the story. Then you'll send it out to publishing house, and those publishing houses will have professional editors editors who do this sort of thing, like the line edits, the copy edits, the proofreading and that sort of thing. So you might not want to do this as a traditionally published author or an author who is seeking traditional publication. But if you are an indie author or you're planning to self publish, then you're probably going to want to hire one or more of these types of editors for each of your stories. So let's get into what the different types of edits mean and how much it costs. So with most freelance editors who are talking about fiction, which we're talking about novels, not nonfiction, like how to books, but actual fiction, we're going to be looking at three different types of editors, a developmental editor, a copy editor or line editor, which are often used interchangeably or a proofreader. So we're going to talk about these individually and what all each one involves. Now, before we get into that, though, I do want to just give a little bit of a disclaimer that before you begin working with any of these editors, with anyone you want to work with as an editor, you want to make sure that you've gotten a list and a good expectation of exactly what they do. You can't just say, well, Sarah said the developmental editor does this, this, and this, because every editor is a little bit different in what services they offer. I'm just gonna be giving you kind of a general overview of what this typically means when someone is a developmental editor, but you still wanna do your due diligence where you look at their website, you see exactly what a developmental edit entails, because sometimes when you pay for a developmental edit, it will also include a proofread later down the line or a second pass. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So you want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting before you pay for it or before you contract with that person. So with that out of the way, let's talk about developmental editors. So a developmental editor is someone that you're going to use earlier on in the process. So in the last video where we talked about self edits, you didn't send out your edited manuscript to an editor until step seven. But if you decide you wanna work with a developmental editor, you're gonna to wanna to send them the, your story way ahead of time. Because what a developmental editor does is they're gonna help you with those big picture items that we talked about in the editing video. If you haven't watched that first video, I will have it linked down for you below. Basically, a developmental editor is looking at story structure characterization, the flow of your story in general, and they're looking at those big picture items that make up your story structure, your characterization, the setting, the tone of your story. They're looking at the overall content of your novel. A lot of times a developmental edit will feel like the most collaborative of all the edits because it's ultimately your story, but a good developmental editor will understand the genre that you're writing in and they'll be able to say to you, you know, this pacing is a little bit slow. I think you need another murder here. And they're going to give you actual feedback on how to fix your story. If there's plot holes, if it needs more action, if the romance isn't coming together because these two characters aren't seeming to like really have chemistry on the page, they're going to give you usually advice on how to increase that chemistry or how to give your hero more backstory. So it's more collaborative because they're going to say to you, why don't you try this? And you might have to defend yourself and say, well, I didn't do that on purpose because this, this, and this, or it'll be kind of back and forth with a good developmental editor. And like I said, a really good developmental editor is someone who understands the genre that you're writing in and they know kind of the reader expectations. And part of their job is usually to help you make your story more marketable. So they're not going to have you copying someone else's work or someone else's tone. But what they will do is they'll kind of guide you in the right direction of like, ah, you can't really call this a romance if these people break up at the end of it. It's more like women's fiction or something, um, or for some people horror. <laughs> but 
you know, if it's a romance and it's in the romance genre, they need to have a happily ever after and they're going to guide you in that. They're also going to make sure that you have that tension on the page or that if it is a certain trope of a story, like it's a secret baby story, they're going to know that secret baby stories usually have these certain elements and they're going to make sure that you have those elements in your own story. So they're really collaborating with you to make your story structure, your characters, their motivation and all that big stuff much stronger. So you can see why you'd want to work with a developmental editor earlier on in the process and there are different types of developmental editors some editors will offer just kind of like a manuscript critique instead of giving you really detailed suggestions they're just going to give you kind of an overview of like I think this story needs these elements to be a little bit strengthened or they're going to go full in developmental edit and they're going to give you a lot of feedback on your story Let's talk about what a developmental editor is not. A developmental editor is not someone who is going to go through your story line by line. They're not going to find your typos. They're not going to fix your grammar or work on your commas. They're not going to you know, fix word choices or awkward sentences. They are not looking at things on that detailed level. They're looking at this big picture that we talked about in the last video. They're looking at the big items, the story structure. They're looking at the skeleton of your house and making sure that you have the bones of a great story. And they're looking at those sort of characterization and that sort of stuff. But they're not looking at each individual line of dialogue. They're not looking for typos. They're not gonna polish up your story the way that a proofreader would give you every little mechanical detail of your story. So don't expect that when you pay for a developmental edit that you're going to get that sort of line edit. You're just gonna get that big picture overview. All right, so how much does a developmental edit cost. As with all three of these types of edits, the costs are going to vary wildly. Like when it comes to freelance editors, you could have one developmental edit is going to cost you $500 and a different developmental editor is going to cost you $10,000. And when I say very wildly, that's what I'm talking about. It all depends on the editor and what they charge, what their expertise is. So you really need to make sure you know upfront what their prices are and, you know, for most indies, it is not going to make a lot of sense to spend $7,000 or $10,000 on a developmental edit because your chances of making that kind of money back when you also have cover art and marketing to do is very slim. But you also may not want to choose the cheapest person because maybe their sole credential is, I just really love to read. And that's not really going to be somebody who's going to give you professional feedback. So you really want to be discerning when you choose your editor. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more later in the video. Let's talk about average costs, like what you can really expect to pay. Developmental edits can often be the most expensive edits because they're actually going in and structuring your story for you. Not always. Sometimes line edits are the most expensive, but it depends again on the particular editor. Most editors, and this goes for all three categories we're going to talk about today, will give you a per word cost. So it'll be like 10 cents a word or whatever. Some people old school will still give you a per page and that's based on very m many different things. So if someone gives you a quote that's per page, make sure you understand exactly what that means. Because in the old days, when things, when people were typing things out on typewriters, the average was 250 words per page. But when you put that into a word processor, depending on what font you're using, you might have 500 words per Per page. So when you look at your Word document and it says 95 pages, you think you're going to get charged 95 pages times $5 a page because they told you $5 a page. But some editors will say, oh, but a page to me means 250 words. So now you're getting charged double what you expected. So my advice to you is to get a quote up front. You say, this is how many words it is. How much about on average is that going to cost me? So that you kind of know what the upper limit is for this edit. I always prefer to get a per word estimate because we're in the digital age now. It should be per word, not per page because pages don't really mean anything anymore in digital editing. Just my opinion there. If they give you a per page quote, make sure you know what page the definition of a page is. That's my only warning. So typically a developmental editor is going to charge between one cent a word all the way up to about 10 cents per word. So I'm going to give you costs based on a 70,000 word novel, which is kind of like an average sized novel. 
if you're calling something a novel, we can talk about this in another video, but if you're calling something a novel, it's at least 40,000 words and up. So we're gonna go for a sort of an average novel word count, which is 70,000 words to give you an idea, but you can also use your own calculator to get a good sense of that. So a 70,000 word novel will cost you anywhere from about $700 for a developmental edit to $7,000 for a developmental edit on the most expensive side. Most freelance editors that I've seen who work with indies are more along the like two to three cents per word for developmental edits. So that's kind of where I would typically look is between probably one to three cents per word. One cent is somebody you've got who probably is a newer editor three cents is gonna be someone who's pretty pro. 10 cents better be like Stephen King's editor for me if I'm gonna spend that as an indie, which I probably wouldn't. Okay guys, so I just wanted to come on and insert this. As I'm editing, I'm realizing that talking about these costs, it sounds extremely expensive to have your book edited. I want you to know that this is one of the more expensive places where you have to invest as an indie author. Edits are going to vary wildly. So even though I say 700 to 7,000, that doesn't mean that you can't look around and find a developmental editor who's just getting started or who offers you know, better pricing and you can get it done for more like $300 or something a little bit cheaper. I'm just giving you the average costs for the more professional editors. If you guys would like to see a separate video on how to edit your novel, get your cover art, and publish your books on a budget, please go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Because what I don't want to happen is that you don't hear anything else that I'm saying about the types of edits and editors, because all you can think about as you're going through this video is how expensive it's going to be to get your novel edited. When you are just getting started and you don't have any income coming in from your books, you really don't want to be spending thousands and thousands of dollars up front to have your cover art and all these different types of edits. Because if you spend, say, $5,000, $6,000 producing your very first book, you're probably not going to make that money back very quickly because you're going to need several books to start making a good living as an indie. So you don't want to invest a ton of money. You want to find a good way to do this on a budget, but what I'm just giving you is the basic costs and average costs of the different editors that are out there. I will definitely gladly do a video on how to do this on a budget when you're first getting started. I personally did not use a developmental editor or anything like that when I first got started. I was mostly using critique groups and beta readers and then a proofreader. And so it was a lot less expensive. These days, things are a lot more competitive. So you really want to have a super polished novel, but there are ways to do that without spending seven to $10,000 producing your first novel. Because the more you get yourself in the hole right from the beginning, the worse off it's going to be because it's just going to take you a lot more time to sort of recoup your costs and your money. So what I don't want to happen is for you guys to be watching this video and suddenly decide that all you can hear is how much it's going to cost and start to feel defeated by that amount of money. Just know that when it comes to the costs here, that there are ways to save money. So if you're interested in hearing about how to do this on a budget, please go ahead and leave that in the comments below. But for now, since I didn't put that information in the main video, this is just going to talk about some of the more average costs, which in general are going to be a little bit more expensive. I just didn't want you guys to get freaked out by that. All right, back to your regular scheduled programming. Moving on to line edits or copy edits. Now, when you get to traditional publishing, a line editor might be very very different from a copy editor because a copy editor might be just what they're calling a proofreader. But we're not talking about traditional publishing, we're talking about you hiring a freelance editor. So in most cases, line edits and copy edits are used interchangeably. So it's the same thing basically. But you do want to go on to your chosen editor's website and make sure that you understand if they have a difference between line edits and copy edits, you want to know what those differences are. For my purposes in today's video, a line edit and a copy edit are going to be the same thing, so I'm just going to call it a line edit. So in a line edit, the editor is going to go through your manuscript line by line. We talked about this in my first video on how to self edit because hopefully you've done this for yourself as well. But now you're going to take someone who's a real professional and they're going to go through your story line by line. They're going to look at all the word choices. They're going to be analyzing your sentences. They're going to be looking for flow, awkward sentencing. They're going to be looking for consistency often where they're really looking to see like, 
if you if he had blue eyes over here, he's got blue eyes over here and you didn't switch it up, they're gonna be looking for clarity to make sure that when you have a sentence, it's done in the most clear way as possible. They may not go through and change a lot of your sentences, like nitpicky wise, but if something is really glaring that like this is not the clearest way you could have said it, they will help give you suggestions on how to fix it. They're looking for continuity in the story, like, oh, you had this thread here about this ribbon in act one and it never comes up again. So they're gonna mention that sort of thing. Usually they're looking for tense. So if you're in present tense, you're in present tense throughout. They're looking for head hopping and POV switches to make sure you've handled those well and that each character has their own individual and unique voice. Sometimes they're going to be looking for cliches like you know if you've used something improperly a really good line editor will actually quote to you what the rule is like you're using this phrase but that's not actually what it means because in Boston in 1920 blah 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 and they'll give you rules because they know that cool kind of stuff that most of us authors do not know. Um, so they'll pick out cliches or you know awkward wording, they'll pick out repeated phrases. A lot of the stuff that we talked about in my first video about things I want you to do in that second step where you're line editing your own novel, that's what a line editor is going to do. Now, let's talk about what they will not do. They're usually not looking at your overall plot structure. They're not gonna point out plot holes. They're not gonna point out that your character needs a better backstory. They're not looking at those big picture things. They're assuming that by the time the novel gets to them, those big things are already taken care of. Now we're kind of focusing in. So if you imagine that the developmental editor is way out here on the big picture, the copy editor or the line editor is someone who's zooming in on each line of your story and fixing the words and the sentence flow and that sort of thing. So what they're not doing is looking at those big picture story structure things, but they are looking specifically for word choice, word flow, cliches, that you're using words correctly, that you're being consistent and that sort of thing. A lot of times they will also point out typos and punctuation errors, but they're not gonna be as detailed with that as a proofreader might get, for example. So I highly recommend that even if you use a developmental editor or a line editor along the way, you also use a proofreader, which we're gonna talk about what a proofreader is in just a minute, but sometimes, a line editor will also talk a little bit about your plot. If something is glaring to them, like this doesn't really make sense or this doesn't come together, but they're never gonna be as detailed as a developmental editor when it comes to the big story structure stuff. Mostly what they're looking at is the line by line word choices and sentence flow. So how much does a line editor or a copy editor cost? So we're looking usually between one cent and four cents per word for a copy editor. So for a 70,000 word novel, you're again looking at between $700 and $2,800. I have found, I put this as a kind of a baseline, but I have worked with pretty good line editors in the past that I only spent maybe like four or $500 for. So they were probably charging more like half a cent per word. And when I started doing some more research on pretty current prices, you're generally going to be in that one to four cents per word. And like this, you probably usually be more in the like 1.6 cents or two cents. Four cents a word is pretty expensive, I would say for a line editor, but you will find some people that charge that much. I would personally be looking for the one to two cent or below for a line editor. So let's move on to the third one, which is one of the ones that I feel like you should not skip no matter what, which is a proofreader. So a proofreader is sort of those last eyes. Everything else in your story is put together. Your sentence flow is good. The story is structured nicely. You've got great characters on the page. Everything is good to go. But this is the last set of eyes that are not your own <laughs> that are going to actually look through your story and pick out all those mechanical errors. So this person, again, is not looking at your big picture story structure. They're not going to mention that this word is this is awkwardly worded or that the sentence isn't flowing. This person is laser focused in on the grammar and the typos, the punctuation, that sort of thing, the heavy mechanics of your story. So where are your commas? Do you have apostrophes used in the correct way? Is your dialogue properly formatted? Do you have, um, this is, sometimes it's the consistency stuff too. Like if you have the Order of Shadows, which is my evil organization of witches in my Shadow Demon Saga, is capitalized, O and the S is capitalized, is it capitalized everywhere? So they're looking at the mechanics and the consistency there. So basically all we're looking at is grammar, typos, punctuation, sometimes consistency. And that's pretty much what they're looking at. 
This is not someone who's going to look for sentence flow, word choices, um, you know, developmental type things. So don't expect that much out of them. But a proofreader is also usually going to be the fastest to get the edits back to you. And they're also going to be the least expensive. A proofread will usually cost between 0 0.003. So we're not, we're at like a third of a cent to 0 0.015 cents per word, which is like a cent and a half per word. That means a 70,000 word novel is gonna cost roughly between 200 and a thousand dollars for a 70,000 word novel. Sometimes with a proofreader, you can find people who are willing to do your novel for a flat fee. So instead of per word, they'll say, if your novel is between 50 and 75,000 words, I'll do it for a hundred dollars. And sometimes you can find those kind of deals and often those people can be really good. So sometimes look for those and you can get kind of a deal on it and you'll usually get it back within a week. Copy edits, line edits, I didn't actually talk about this in my guide, but copy and line edits can sometimes take at least two to three weeks to get back. A developmental edit can sometimes take a month. It just depends on the editor. So now that we've covered all of those things about what types of editors and what they do and how much they cost, let's just go over a brief list of tips that I have for you for when you are ready to hire an editor. So this is a tricky thing here because as indie and self-publishing becomes more popular, there are also a lot more predators on the market who hang up their shingle, they put up a website and they will tell you they charge X amount of dollars and that they're amazing editor. And then you'll work with them and you will find out that they have no idea what they're doing. And they're just trying to make money off of desperate indies who are looking for a good editor. And so you want to do your due diligence to make sure that you know that whoever you're hiring actually knows what they're doing. They have some level of training and experience in this and they're worth the money that you're paying them. So here are some tips for when you're hiring an editor. Ask for their credentials or check their website and see what their training is. It doesn't mean they have to have some kind of like bachelor's in, you know, grammar or something like that, but it does mean they need to have some sort of training in editing. They've either taken a course, they've been certified in it, they've been editing professionally for years, they have a lot of experience, something. They know their stuff make sure that there's some credentials. I have worked with people before or had editors that were recommended to me when I was in a pinch where I would ask them, so, you know, what are your credentials? What's your experience? And they would just say, well, I just have always loved to read. Okay, well, I love to read too. That doesn't mean I understand every single use of every single comma or, you know, all the grammar rules that are out there. That's why I need a professional editor. Are you a grammar nerd or not? Because I don't want to hire you for a line edit if you have no idea between how this sentence flows and whether this one, because I don't want to pay you $700 for you to just come back and be like, wow, that was a great book. I want feedback and I want professional feedback. So I just love to read is not good enough. That hopefully is something most editors love to do because it's their job, but hopefully they also have extensive experience or training in some way. So find out what that is. Sometimes they'll list it on their website. Sometimes you just need to ask. You can also ask for a sample edit. Some editors are too busy to do this, but a lot of editors will Will do this for you where you can send them the first chapter of your manuscript or a small excerpt and they will line edit it for you and they will give you sort of a, an idea of how well they do i did this with an editor i was working with recently where i asked for a line edit and just for a sample edit and when it came back they were actually correcting things that were right and changing them into something that was wrong so i immediately knew even though I don't know everything about grammar, I immediately knew this was not the person for me because they didn't know their facts. They didn't know their rules. So if I had not done that sample edit with them, I would have probably wasted $500 working with someone who just isn't up to par. So make sure that you ask for a sample edit if you're unsure about their credentials or about whether or not they're gonna be a good fit for you. Sample edits will be free, by the way. It may only be a page, but at least you get an idea of what they're doing and you shouldn't be charged for it. Also, make sure that you get a quote up front. So like I said, you don't want someone to say, oh, I charge about between this and this, depending on what type of shape your manuscript is in, or that, oh, I do this per page, and then you didn't understand that a page to them is 100 every 100 words or whatever they decided to do that was tricky. Tell them, this is my novel, this is how long it is, how much is the edit going to be? Sometimes it does happen where you ask for a line edit or you ask for a proofread 
and the editor tells you it's going to be $200 and then they get your book and it's in so much worse shape. An editor is assuming that if you're asking for a proofread, they are the, just the final pass and they're just gonna be catching these mechanical errors. If your story is a mess and it's typo after typo and it's just, it's just horror story for them, they're gonna charge you a lot more than 200. But a professional editor will come back to you usually at that point and they'll say, I'm so sorry, but this manuscript really needs more work, so it's gonna be more like $500. They will let you know up front. An editor who does not tell you up front is really not being professional. If they come back to you after the edit is done and they say, oh, I know I told you 200, but it's actually gonna be 700, and they expect you to pay that and the work is already done, they are not a professional person. Now, sometimes you're gonna to have to pay it to avoid a lawsuit or whatever else, but beware of people like that. Make sure if you can to get a good quote up front that you understand how they work and how much it's going to cost. And then ask them, say, if you're gonna go over this $210 quote, please let me know ahead of time so that I can make a decision at that point whether to continue or not. Another great thing to do is to talk to other authors. So a lot of times there will be testimonials on an editor's website or you will have found them through referrals. Talk to other authors who have used them and make sure that they're really a good reference. Now this is not always foolproof because like I said, I've had editors recommended to me that just were not up to par and that I would not recommend to other people, but obviously these authors thought they were good enough. So it's just, you know, you, this is not going to always be the number one thing that you can rely on, but beware of an editor who refuses to give you any client names. Like let's say they have no testimonials and you say, I would love to know who you've worked with so I could reach out to them and find out, you know, kind of how your work style is or get a reference. If they refuse to give you any names, you might want to just move on because that means they probably have literally no one they can tell you that would give them a good reference. So that means like beware, get the heck out of Dodge. Another great thing to know is their timeline. So know how long it's gonna take them because you don't wanna turn in your manuscript for a proofread and expect that, oh, I'll probably get that back in a week and then you don't hear from them for two months because especially when you're self-publishing, you need to know when that book is coming back and when it's gonna get published because you've got release dates and cover art and all these things to manage. So know their timeline in advance, like know how long it typically takes them to get things back to you and then reaffirm that when you actually turn it in. So when you first query them and you say, Hey, I want to get on your schedule. How long does it typically take you to get a proofread back to me? And they say, oh, it's usually about a week. You say, okay, great. Then when you turn your novel into them and you're ready to start the proofread, say, so I can expect this back from you by Friday. And they at that point might say, oh, you know what? I'm a little bit backed up. You're not going to get it back probably till next Wednesday. Okay, now you kind of know, but always get that confirmation so you know what to expect. Another thing to keep in mind is to book early. A lot of the best editors these days are booked months in advance. So you can't expect necessarily to finish your rough draft today, self edit in two weeks, and then contact your editor at that point and hand it over to them in three days. Most editors are not going to work that way. Most of the time, you need to let them know a couple of months in advance that, hey, I'm gonna need this proofread and so on, which means that you have to be a little bit more strict on your own schedule. Some editors, if you miss your deadline, will just push you back on the schedule and it's fine. I've also worked with editors before, sadly, who if you don't make that date, they just have to move on because they're too busy to wait for you to finish the book. So this is just one of those things that's sort of like a headache, but it's your responsibility when you're working with an editor to know how far in advance they're booking out and what their policies are in terms of flexibility if you don't turn it in. I worked with an editor that if it was due on Monday the 25th, you had to have it in first thing Monday morning. And if you missed that, even if it was the tw morning of the 26th, she just didn't have time for you anymore and she had moved on and you were done and you had to find a new editor. And it is not fun to be scrambling to find a new editor at the last minute because most people are booked. So it's just something you need to know ahead of time and if you can to go ahead and book it early and know what their flexibility rules are. All right, guys, so that's most of what I have for you on editors. Also, I know a big question that a lot of you have is where do I find an editor? So this is a great question. Obviously, you can just Google search freelance editor 
writer for self-published novel and that sort of thing. And you can find people and you can go through this due diligence that I was just talking about. If you're in groups with other authors, you can ask them, does anybody have good references for editors who are available um, and let them know what type of editor you're looking for. I'm looking for a proofreader who's gonna charge less than $200 for my 70,000 word novel and is available starting in August. Does anybody have any recommendations? So being in author Facebook groups can be helpful for that. Being in local author groups who they can help you. You may even be able to find local authors through writing groups like RWA or NaNoWriMo. Another good way to find editors is when you find an indie book, especially that you love, check the front of the book because a lot of times indies will list that this book was edited by and they'll put a attribution in there for their editor and their editor's website or they'll say cover art done by this person and they'll put links in there. It'll usually be on the copyright page. So you don't even necessarily have to buy the book. You can just go to Amazon and do the look inside and you can see that information right there. So if you, there's an indie author that you admire, maybe troll their books a little bit and see if they list their editor or reach out to them. If there's somebody that you see their book is really well polished, try sending them an email or reaching out to them on Instagram and saying, your books are so well done. I'm a new author. I would love to find an editor. Do you have any recommendations? So those are often like word of mouth going to be the best ways to find editors out there. Um, I am working on compiling a list of editors. There used to be one on my Sarah Cannon website and there actually probably still is, but it's very out of date and I haven't really worked on it so far. So I don't have a great list for you guys now, but if you're interested in an actual list of editors, you can go to kboards.com, which used to be Kindle boards and find the writer's cafe and they used to have a really good resource list of editors as well. I'm not sure if that's been updated, but it might be something you can find. But for the most part, the best way to find editors is either through Google searches for exactly what you're looking for and then just doing your own research or my recommendation is to join Facebook author groups and ask around and see if you can get that or look inside other indies books that you admire and get the editor's name from there. All right, guys, that's everything I have about professional editors. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have not yet watched the how to edit your own novel self edits video, go back and watch that now. I have linked it for you down below. Also take a moment, please, to go over to my website at heartbreathings.com slash blog or heartbreathings.com slash how to edit your novel. I'll have that here for you on the screen, but I'll also link it down below and download your free 12 page guide on how to edit your novel. It has all of this information about line editors, proofreaders and developmental edits and the costs and all of those tips that I just gave you are all on that sheet. So make sure that you go download that. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter list and you can unsubscribe at any time. Thank you guys so much. I hope that you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video and comment down below and let me know if you have any editors that you would recommend. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video where we're going to talk about beta readers. All right, see you then. Bye.